10 minute topic revision, and it's a big one today because we're doing year 12 trigonometry. I am telling you that this is one of the topics that students find the most difficult in the transition to A-level because the level of equations that you're solving is just that much more difficult. So there's a quick note to make. You do have a bit of stuff on like sine and cosine rule and stuff like that in year 12 trig. I'm not going to talk about that today because you've already done it at GCSE and I want to focus on the big stuff. And after all, I've only got 10 minutes. So let's jump into the whiteboard and we'll kind of have a look at what we're going to focus on. The first thing that I want you to just know like the back of your hand are the graphs of the three main trigonometric functions. So sine x, cos x, and tan x. So these graphs kind of actually go on forever, right? I've cut them off, obviously, because I've not got infinite space on this whiteboard, but they go on forever. Sine has a period of 360 degrees, which means it repeats itself every 360 degrees. If you look at 360, it then starts again. Same with cos, has a period of 360, and in fact, it's actually just sine, but shifted by 90 degrees. It's exactly the same thing, just starts in a different place. And then tan x is kind of the weird younger brother, doesn't look anything like either of them. It has asymptotes at 90 and then every 180 from there, meaning that it goes up to infinity but never quite hits 90 degrees. And then after 90 degrees, it starts again at minus infinity and goes on like that. Tan has a period of 180, meaning that it repeats itself every 180 degrees. The next two things that I want you to know are identities. An identity is an equation that is true for every value of x. So it doesn't matter what x is, tan x is always the same as sine x over cos x, and cos squared plus sine squared is always equal to 1. We're going to use these in a second. And now I want to talk about solving trig equations. This is going to be the majority of your time, okay? So a trig equation is something that, for example, looks like sine x equals a third. And then I would ask you the question, what is x? I've put this in a box here, not because I'm going to solve it. I'm going to show you how to solve it in a sec, so be patient, you nutter. But basically, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for some trig function, cos, sine, tan, equals a number. This is the nice equation that we know how to solve. In reality, you're going to get something grim looking like this. And what we need to do is use the identities to make it look like this, okay? So we've got grim equation that's got like loads of trig functions. The goal is make it look like some trig function equals some number. So let's have a look at this, okay? The problem here is that there's two trig functions. If I just had the cos or just had the sine, it'd kind of be of this form. So how can I make this so we just have one trig function? So I'm noticing that I've got a cos and a sine, and I've got in the back of my mind, right, that if I have a sine divided by cos, that is equal to tan. So what if I was to divide both sides of the equation by cos here? I would get root 3 equals sine theta over cos theta. And then I say, wait a minute, sine over cos is just tan. So this is actually the same as the equation, tan theta equals root 3. This is of the nice form, isn't it? This is of the form trig function equals number. So let's go ahead and actually solve this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the graph of tan right here. Okay, we know that these graphs are infinite. So I suppose what it's asking is, this is tan theta. When is this thing equal to the square root of three? If I was to draw a straight line at root three, the solutions would be the intersections of these graphs, right? Tan theta is root three here. It's root three here. It's root three here. It's root three here. You can see that I'm gonna have infinite solutions here. So that is why when we're given trig equations to solve, we are given a range. It's saying, solve this equation, only giving me the solutions between zero and 360 degrees. So I am given walls essentially within which to work, okay? Zero is here, 360 is here, isn't it? So I only care about solutions between these two walls. In other words, this one and this one. So there is something called a cast diagram. I don't like it. I'm saying it now. I prefer this. I think it's much more intuitive. But if you do the cast diagram, more than happy for you to do that. I'm just not going to tell you about it in this video. Okay, so I'm looking for these two solutions. So this is when you use your calculator. So to get the first solution, what I can do 
is I can say that, you know, from a, from an algebraic point of view, to get theta on its own, I would have to do the inverse tan of root 3 here. That is the inverse of the tan. That's how I get theta on its own. Putting that into my calculator is going to give me the first solution. And the first solution is going to give me 60 degrees here. So now we kind of look and see what does that correspond to on the graph. It corresponds to this being 60 degrees. I can now use the symmetries of the graph to get this. Okay, given that the period of tan is 180, to jump between solutions, all I'm going to need to do is add and take away chunks of 180, right? You know, if I want to get here, take away another 180, add another 180, etc. The only one that I care about in this case is this one. So my next solution is just going to be 60 plus 180. That is going to get me this. And this makes sense, doesn't it? This chunk is 60. So that is going to be the same as this chunk here. We can see that this is 180, add another 60 to get it. So my final answer to this would be 60 and 240 degrees. And that is how to solve a trig equation. Look at this two-step process. Use the identities to make it nice, then use the graph to get all of the solutions. Let's have a go at another. Let's have a look at this equation here. I've got a sine x and I've got some amount of cos squared x. The problem again is that I need just one trig function. So can I get it all in terms of cos or can I get it all in terms of sine? Look at this. This is a relationship between cos squared and sine squared. So I know that if I have a cos squared, I can change that into some function of sine squared. And that's what I'm going to do now. I can write cos squared as 1 minus sine squared x. This is an absolute classic. Let's sort this out. This is going to be root 2 minus root 2 sine squared x. I've got root 2 minus sine x equals root 2 minus sine squared x. I can cancel the root 2s, right? So I've got minus sine x equals minus root 2 sine squared x. Let's add this to both sides. So I'm going to get root 2 sine squared x minus sine x equals 0. If you've seen the 10-minute topic revision on quadratics, you will recognize that this is a hidden quadratic here. If y was equal to sine x, what would happen? I would have root 2 y squared minus y equals 0, which means I can factorize this, right? This is going to be y root 2 y minus 1 equals 0. This gives me two solutions for y, right? It's going to give me y equals 0 or y equals 1 over root 2. This is super useful because now when I put my sine x back in, this is going to get me the equation in this nice form, isn't it? Because I've got sine x equals 0 and I've also got sine x equals 1 over root 2. So this is just now a case of solving two equations. Let's start off with the sine x equals zero, because looking at the sine graph, I can read those off pretty easily. Sine x equals zero is zero, 180, and 360. So this bit gives me three solutions. It gives me zero, 180, and 360. And now let's look at this. Sine x equals one over root two. Let's remember what we do. We draw a horizontal line at this value, so 1 over root 2. That tells me that I'm going to be looking for one, two solutions. My calculator gives me the first one. So if you do inverse sine of 1 over root 2 in your calculator, you are going to get 45 degrees. We are now going to use the symmetries of the graph. And with sine, we do the following. This distance here is 45 degrees, which is the same as this distance here. So what we do is we do 180 minus 45 to get the second solution. And that is going to be 135 degrees, giving me my final answer as x equals 0 degrees, 45 degrees, 135 degrees, 180 degrees, and 360 degrees. This is an absolute classic question in year 12 maths, the quadratic trig equation. 
Okay, now we're probably over the 10 minutes, but I'm happy to do that because I really want to give you this absolute nugget of wisdom and I can't let you go without it. So super quickly, if we have something where we don't have an X inside the trig function, so in this case, we have a 2X, we need to amend the range before we solve the equation. Let me say that again. We need to amend the range before we solve the equation. So, how are we going to do that? We need to work out whatever the range of this new function is going to be. So if x is between minus 180 and 180, 2x is going to be between minus 360 and 360, isn't it? Now, we go on as normal with the cos graph, but just getting all of the solutions for 2x, like pretending it's an x, and then only when we have all of those solutions, we go back divide them by two to get x on its own. Let me show you what that looks like, okay? Let's now imagine 2x is my x. I'm saying, okay, when is this thing equal to a half? We draw a line at a half. We know that the range is 360 and minus 360, so I'm looking for what? One, two, three, four solutions. We know that the calculator is gonna give us this first one. So inverse cos of a half, and that is going to get us 60 degrees, meaning that this is 60. Okay, so my solutions for 2x, the first one is going to be 60. And how do we use the symmetries of the graph with cos? We use the fact that this chunk of graph is the same as this chunk of graph. We know that this chunk of graph is 60 degrees long, meaning that this is 60 degrees long. So to get this, we do 360 minus 60. So that is going to give us 300 degrees. But we want these solutions as well. But it turns out that cos is an even function, which means it's the same on both sides. It's symmetrical around the y-axis. So this is just going to be minus 60, and this is going to be minus 300. It is only now that we are certain that we have all of the solutions, do we divide by 2. And we're going to see now that all of the solutions are in the appropriate range, right? 300, 330, there we go. 150 minus 30 and minus 150 degrees, all within the correct range. Definitely gone over 10 minutes, but I wanted to provide you with that value. Not gonna make the video any longer. Ciao.